in what we do. And honesty to clients, honesty to ourselves, you know, and put in your best effort because you will lose cases in court. Hey guys, this is June and the founder of Easy Law. So it's my pleasure today that I finally have invited Mr. Sarawana. He is a partner and the head of the firm's tax, SST and customs in Rosli Dahlan Sarawana partnership and has appeared in benchmark litigations with a sizable volumes of wins in tax disputes. Mr. Sarawana, thank you so much for taking your time with me today. You're most welcome, June, and thank you for inviting me. No problem. It's our pleasure to have you in our Easy Law interview show. So Mr. Sarawana, can you tell me like, what has actually inspired you to become a lawyer when you were young? I, I guess if you, if you want me to tell you the honest truth is, is that yes. when you come from a, a working class background and you're an Indian okay. boy, your parents only give you two options. Uh, I come from that generation of... Okay. The two Doctor options. or lawyer. Exactly. <laughs> so I told, I told myself that I'm not so hardworking. I may not have the industry to pursue medicine. So I thought law should be lebih senang sikit lah, easier. You know? I chose law. Okay, that's interesting. So there, are, okay, there are so many areas of practice in law, right? So how did you actually pick tax as the niche that you want to focus and gotten your even gotten your master's degree in LSE? Like that's super awesome. Thank you. Uh, you see, June, mm -hmm. since I was asked to read law, right? So when I when I embarked on my law degree. I told myself that, you know, I'm quite fortunate to be given a chance to pursue my education. So instead of complaining and, and not being grateful, I studied and I told myself I'll do my very best. And, and as I realized, and, and I'm sure students today will realize, if students who are hearing to, to our, our, our recording today, is that law is not purely based on what you learn in textbooks, right? Textbooks mm. and lectures are the basics that you get. But you must also read law magazines and law journals. Mm. So there is a law magazine uh, at the time, a bulletin called New Law Journal. New Law Journal. Okay. New Law Journal. And you are talking about 25 years ago, you know. <laughs> and, Don't review your age. <laughs> you know, and today, today everything is online. But All 25 right. years ago, no internet is still fairly new. So there was a hard copy of this bulletin. And I went through these bulletins and I read them because they're very thin and, and they're out every fortnight, I believe. And there was a nice write-up. Uh, okay. This particular bulletin is from the UK, and it spoke about specialization, mm. uh, discussion about you know the, the the future of specialization. And in England, barristers are all most of them have a particular area they do, right? Mm. You end up doing tax, you end up doing commercial, you end up doing you know family or criminal, and and so they, they gave all these examples. And there was a table that intrigued me. And mm -hmm. in that table, they stated, they listed how much these lawyers earn, these barristers in England earn. Oh, okay. Right? And the highest paid barristers in England at the time, I'm not sure it is still today, were tax barristers. I see. Wow, that's really interesting. So, so okay. given that I was asked to pursue law uh, okay. by my, by my parents for economic uh, mm -hmm. gains and stability in life, so I told myself, since I'm earning, uh, learning law to earn some money, myself earn the most, you know. So that is how tax law intrigued me, right? That is very brilliant. And then I looked at, uh, at a very old textbook, which I used to today. So I then realized that, you know, if you're a, a, a tax law is a very dry subject, you know, and it's based on concepts, man-made concepts. So I liked that kind of uh, subject in Benaz University and tax law doesn't involve much emotions. I also like that. And <laughs> more, importantly, more importantly, June, you only have tax problem if you have money. Yes, you're right. right? And, and if you, you can help me to save my tax money, I'm willing to pay you more to save more the money. And, and it's a rich man's <laughs> problem, right? It's a good problem yes. to have. Tax yes. problem, if you ask me, Mm. Uh, whenever a person or a friend of mine and come and tell me I got a problem in the tax department, I first say congratulations. Congratulations, you have a tax problem. <laughs> yeah, because you have done very well in life. You must do well. You must have money for tax department to come and speak to you. Correct, yes. right? Yes, you're so, right. So, so the fact that the tax department wants to talk to you, wants to become your friend, 
That means you've done well, you know, in whatever you're doing. So, so, so that's how I realized, okay, la, you know, when I do tax work means I'll get paid la, because the client got money, you see. So that, that motivated me to pursue tax law. This June it, uh, is my thinking as a young law student. Mm -hmm. Of course, with the benefit of uh, mentorship and maturity, I, of course, now know law is beyond that. Law is about making things right. Uh, law is an avenue to go and help someone uh, to get justice. And as a tax lawyer, I'm very happy that I'm able to do that for many taxpayers. For example, uh, yesterday I was in court for a hospital, a charitable mm -hmm. hospital, uh, which had been running for more than 100 years in Malaysia. And they got wow. tax, right? And I was very happy to do it on a pro bono basis for that particular hospital or uh, charitable universities that we have in this country. They're also having tax issues now. So tax is something that affects every one of us. Mm. And my view is government can collect taxes. I think we all must pay our taxes, but we only pay what is due. Mm. Not one cent more, not one cent less. Mm. So the government cannot come and demand taxes. When I say government, the tax department, yeah? Mm. Cannot yeah. demand taxes if we don't have to pay that taxes. Mm. Understand? So that is the benefit of maturity. I add on to say why I chose tax law because I'm also able to do that and bring a change to especially charities, right? Because if they don't pay these taxes, that means you've got more money in your pocket mm. to do what they want to do. Mm. Awesome. That's really awesome. You know what? Knowing law and knowing tax both in combination is so, so, so powerful. <laughs> Right, so, you. yeah, I really learned a lot from you. So, can I know, like, um, you are a partner of your firm. So, who is largely responsible for the management of the firm? Well, we have a management committee known as the ESCO, uh, Executive Council of uh, okay. Three Partners, who, who uh, collectively uh, look after the firm and report back to the general partnership. And the three ESCO members are Dr. Narbon, myself, and uh, Bihong. Uh, Bihong is the chairperson of the, partner, of the, of the ESCO. Uh, and we are very proud of that because mm. I think uh, we have more and more uh, women in the legal profession, which is something mm. I'm very proud of. Our chief justice is a, uh, is a woman, a very mm. strong, uh, what mm. you call, judge. And Malaysia is leading in that, that regard. And many of our young lawyers are all mm. very bright uh, female lawyers who do very well you know, at university. But when it comes to the top mm. Uh, mm. management of a partnership in law, mm. you realize uh, we have a lot of men. It's a men-dominated world. And, and, we, and I don't think that it's healthy and I don't think it's right. And that is why we partners at the time when we set up uh, RDS, mm. uh, we want to be a progressive firm and we're very proud of the fact that we want to be different from the rest of the market. And we thought we must put Ms. Uh, Ui Hong as our chairperson in the firm. That's really awesome. That's really yeah. awesome. Because I honestly believe uh, June, uh, and I've seen this in leadership of women, mm -hmm. they bring a lot of different sense into decision making process. Mm. I, if I decide on my own, I might be too clinical. Mm. And, and as, as someone who runs the firm today, I think we must have compassion together with mm. clinical process. They must go hand in hand. You also cannot be just compassionate and become a charity. <laughs> you can't, right? Because you're still running a practice, right? Mm. But you also must have the element of uh, clinical thinking, uh, thought process, but you also must have uh, compassion in when you make your decisions. And I think, I think Beyong has given me that, uh, that guidance uh, to the partnership. And of course, Dr. Narbert is a very senior lawyer. He's practiced more than 40 years. So that wisdom also comes and to see how do you set up a law firm and make it successful. So that is how we, we collectively put in our head. And then we do consultation with our partners. Mm. Starting from the most junior partners to, to, the, to the most senior partner, mm. we generally meet for informal lunches. Okay. And, and we all sit down and we will chat and we'll discuss and get input on certain things we want to do. And then we go to the next level. We also go to the associates, pupils, mm -hmm. and also the young interns. Uh, because uh, if you want to run the firm well, mm -hmm. it's not for me to think I'm doing the, I'm running the firm well. It's the feedback from the stakeholders that mm. is very important to know uh, ideas. So example, 
Sometimes you think the printer is running well. You think the printer, mm. the top of the range printer, because that's what the consultant gave it to you, right? The, the from the printing company. But when you go and speak to the associates or the mm. person who's using it, secretaries, then they will tell you, you know what is not as effective as it is. You know, it has this issue, this issue, and then you go and pay attention to them, and you pick it up, and then you go and uh, report to the printing company, mm. and then it gets resolved, and you get a better quality product. So I'm giving you as an example printing mm, because sure. a lot of printing is what we do, right? <laughs> and, and, and if you solve like small, small, small issues to your colleagues, mm. right, it then creates a nicer working environment. Mm, correct. I, I really love that because like everyone has a say for the company. Like if let's say you think something is something could be done in a more efficient manner, so why not just say it out? But then the culture has to allow that to happen. Allow that. And, and sometimes they make ideas, sometimes the ideas I, I don't think it's great or I don't mm. find it effective. Some ideas I just can't do it now. I say I need time. Mm. And I tell them, you know, I'm very candid I need time. But, but management of the firm is like, they're very corporatized in running the firm. Mm. Uh, although I'm a name partner of the firm, our branding has always been RDS. Mm. Our, our honest intention is for the firm to last another 100 years. Mm. The firm must go beyond Malaysia. It must be a regional mm. firm. So first thing you need to do is to create a sense of ownership and mm. a sense of belonging from in everybody in the firm, starting mm. from the most uh, you know, uh, junior staff mm. to the most senior staff. Once you achieve that, I think you mm. pass the first test of management. Right? Mm. Because when you do management of the firm, it is not from the top, top to down. down. No, it won't work, right? So we don't do town halls in a way Mm. A traditional way because you know now we are in an endemic position and we also have work from home concept for our lawyers. Right. So what we do is we then have a, a our our town hall sessions are lunches, uh, which Ms. Bihong and I will sit with mm -hmm. six to eight pupils or six to eight uh, associate at one time. Wow! Yeah, every quarter we sit and have lunch. So that's why you can see I've gained some weight. Because of, of thanks to all these lunches that I that I go, I got to sit and you not know, have the meal and 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 we do it and and it's not any simple uh, lunch. We we take lunch because we are Malaysians, right? Very right, heavy. <laughs> Makan is an important thing for part of our life, right? You know. So what yeah. we do, we ask them what they like to have, then they say we want to have nasi kanda. So we we go and try different different nasi kanda restaurants. Uh, we don't go there. We'll bring the food to our office. We have okay. a lunch. And and food is then served, uh, you know, in a in a food warmer and all that, so everybody gets to enjoy it, and uh, and then discuss openly. And mm. It's a conversation, you see. And mm. and and after we have this feedback session, immediately after the feedback session, at three o'clock, I meet my heads of department. Okay. And to give them uh, feedback, and if there are any issues to be resolved, uh, they need to come up with a solution quickly. And by end of the day, the, the, the particular student or people who have given me a particular feedback, I report back to him and let him know what we are doing about it. Mm, that, so that's very good. That's very that's good. That's how we do it. So, so that is how we want to be different in the way we, we operate the firm. And you can see from, uh, from the number of lawyers we have, we have grown and we don't have mm -hmm. that many resignations. Mm -hmm. and, and we also uh, keep our ears to the ground when it comes to cost of living now. We know it's a major mm. issue. Uh, is a fact and and the firm is doing well but we're doing mm -hmm. well because of our stakeholders uh, mm -hmm. first is in the office who are very happy to do their work uh, you know at home happy wife uh, makes happy, happy. <laughs> and so in the office I've learned that if you make your colleagues happy your life as a partner will be, happy, will be easier and you know and therefore it must be a joint effort mm. so that is how uh, when you ask me about management of the firm uh, high managing. So I have the finance portfolio in the firm. That's my key portfolio here. Okay. And and my role is to make sure the books balance at the end of the day. Okay. And we must make sure that we are able to pay our colleagues uh, generously. So you'll be hearing our bonus announcements on the 30th of December. Awesome, awesome. So the while you're watching the... this, maybe you're watching in February as we're airing. So actually, this is uh, we are doing this recording in about December 9th. 
that's very very awesome like i i I, I love the philosophy of how you guys handle the firm. Like, you know, um, it shouldn't be from top to top to bottom. It should be bottom to top because it's very agile where the organization itself is an entity that can learn by itself. It's really amazing. So then, can I know, like, what are your favorite productivity hacks as a partner? I think you must, first thing is you must treat all your colleagues fairly mm. and respectfully. And, and in that part, I'm very proud to say that we are the first law firm in Malaysia mm -hmm. to have the respectful workplace policy. Mm. And no form of harassment is tolerated in the firm. Okay. And that uh, policy applies to partners as well. Wow, that's yeah. great. Like in, that's many, great. in many organizations and law firms, is handbook. Handbook doesn't apply to partners, they're all for employees. <laughs> but here, it applies to partners. It is in the partnership deed that the partner of the firm must comply with respectful workplace policy and a partner who breaches the policy is expelled from the partnership. Mm. There is no two ways about it in the firm. Mm. So, so you have a zero tolerance to that. There is a grievance process for anyone to lodge the, 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 the complaint. Uh, we have three channels. Mm -hmm. uh, you may bring up your grievance to Bihong mm -hmm. if you're comfortable speaking to her. Um, if you are a male and you think mm -hmm. you are comfortable speaking to a male partner, they can come to me. Okay. And, yeah, and if the complaint is about me or Bihong, they can go to the senior partner of the firm, Dr. Narbon, and see him directly and, uh, and speak to him. So there are avenues and handful numbers are provided in the, uh, in the policy. So they can mm -hmm. directly call up the partner in charge. And you don't have to go to secretary, make appointments, <laughs> directly communicate with the partner. That's great. That's great. I, I, I think I think I don't hear a lot of law firms they have this policy as well as like have the partners respect that. It's really, really respectful. So you have been named as one of the top 100 lawyers in Malaysia in 2021 and one of the 40 leading lawyers under 40 in Asia by ASEAN Legal Business in 2018. So many young lawyers want to learn from you. So what are your top three advice that you have to the young lawyers who are listening and watching our show today? First, I must make an uh, admission that uh, these awards, you must take them with a pinch of salt. Uh, there are many good lawyers out there. And, and you know, some, here in this case, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate that some clients nominated me for this, uh, this award. But, uh, you know, there are many lawyers out there who are very good. So I'm sure there are many far better many lawyers uh, than me in the market. Uh, having said that, uh, I'm not 40 anymore. I'm 42 this year. So, so, so I was 38 when I, and I received, when I received that uh, particular award. I think for me, my guiding uh, values to, to be in doing practice is, first is passion. Mm. You must have passion in what you do uh, in life, right? In, in your relationships, you must have passion, right? And, and I wake up every morning from the time I was a pupil, getting excited to go to work. Wow. Yeah. I, How to maintain I, that? I, I woke up this morning at uh, six. Uh, to wow. get work. So I, I don't complain. I don't grumble. I'm, mm. I'm excited to go to work, right? Uh, but as a student, I'm also excited to go to school. So <laughs> I'm very fortunate. I'm blessed with this feeling that I, I am happy to do what I want to do. But the day I, I mean, of course, I do have, you know, I've had uh, issues and, and, and things or some concerns. And I immediately try to address them and find, you know, what is making me unhappy and mm. what is making my passion, uh, you know, affecting my passion. I don't mm. want that to happen. So immediately you must have a point not to let it uh, stay. And then, you know, siki, 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 it becomes busa. You know what I mean? Immediately, immediately, uh, immediately address it, right? Go okay. to the bottom and, you know. So my advice to, to the young lawyers and students who are listening to our, our conversation mm. is that, if you feel unhappy at work because the partner is not being, talking to you nicely or he called you stupid or shouted at you or you're not being paid well, first you, you ask yourself first, you know, mm. did I do my work wrongly or not? I mean, you do work, Salah, you know, you don't try to... Don't expect other people. <laughs> uh, you don't cite the wrong section, you don't cite the wrong case. Memang lah, how lah, like this. You, you can be sued for negligence, right? Okay. So, so maybe the way the partner... Uh, communicated not so good but maybe the day when I'm, but you also must realize just don't take that one incident and hold it against a particular person because mm. they're like your parents right the days your mm. parents scold you but you cannot use that one particular incident 
and forget all the 10 good things mm. in life. So that's the first thing I do is, if I'm unhappy with someone, right, I also think of all the good things that person has done for me. That's great. And balance it. If they have 10 good things and one unhappy thing, I will never, you know, let it spoil my passion or my mood for mm. them. But I think people have bad days, right? And, and, and but when I get a chance and I think I would like to share it with that person, I will go and have a sharing session with the person. Pay, I think we all work on a, a living. I think mm. shouldn't be embarrassed to talk about pay or to go and speak to your to your to your bosses that listen, boss, you know, mm. I can't live with this money. Rental is so much. So but of course you must know your quality of work also. <laughs> like, yeah? uh, you give, of course, uh, of course. You give work word do a ringgit, you cannot go and ask the floor ringgit. La. <laughs> what I mean, right? Right. So so I always give my colleagues the analogy of a restaurant. Mm. You know, there are restaurants we go pay premium and, and makan, but mm. we enjoy the food. We mm. like you, you know, because the food is good, the service is mm. good. Similarly, with our work, like, we are also in the service mm. sector, right? If our quality of work is good, mm. and I'm sure you'll do, uh, you know, you'll be paid well. So go and speak to them and, you know, and reason out with them. So the passion goes to the second part is hard work. Hard work, okay. Hard work is the reason why you can be a good lawyer. Mm. That's my view. It's all mm. hard work. Reading cases, reading the law, you know, looking at the, the statutes. Uh, if I tell you that every weekend I make it a point to read law journals, all reported cases, I read it till today, every weekend. Wow! Don't say I read the whole book, but I'll at least read a few cases. Okay. Uh, Dr. Narbon does that, you know. Uh, you must do that. Learning is a new process in life. Learning doesn't stop after you do your LLB or your master's degree and say, okay, I said, I'm pandai sekarang, tapi I'm belajar. Then your, law, then your law is as rusty as the law that you learned on the day you graduated. <coughs> Isn't it, June, right? Uh, we all graduated some time ago, but the law and <coughs> accounting principles, you know, or policies, you know, whatever area we do, things change, right? Mm. So hard work is essential in legal practice. What is the third ingredient? And the third ingredient for me is this is in fact underlining thing. So, but I highlight it because we we sometimes forget mm. is honesty and integrity. You know, mm, that's and, and not that's only true. as a lawyer, but I think as a person. A core, yes, as a person, is a core value you must have in our mm. in our system, in our environment, culture is we must be honest and mm. integrity in what we do. And honesty to clients, honesty to ourselves, you know, and put in your best effort because you will lose cases in court. Mm. But, you know, and people ask me, how do I feel when I lose a particular case? Generally, you know, my clients are in court when I do a particular case. So they know the effort I put in. But mm. if you lose uh, a case, but if you know you've done a very good job, you put in your 100% into the, into the file. And, but unfortunately, judge is not with you. Mm. Then at least you know you've done an honest piece of work. Yeah. Yeah, right. Judges will see you for honesty because sometimes even a judge is not with you in court, they still allow you to submit. <laughs> they allow you to do your job. You know what I mean? Because they think you have put in effort and they say, okay, la, I, that's you're doing a job. So give you the chance to do your job. Yeah. So these three things passion, passion, work, honesty, and okay. integrity are the three things I think uh, are my uh, productivity uh, values that, that guide me when I do my work. Then, and also your top three advice for young law your lawyers out there. It's really, really amazing sharing. Like, learn so much from you. Especially, I, I really got intrigued when I saw like, wow, you're having like a master's degree in tax. Wow. Law and tax is like two big, <laughs> big topic. Like for someone right. to actually do it and you're able to master in both is really, really amazing. So can I know like, Mrs. Sarah, why not, if let's say anyone who wants to get in touch with you, how should they reach out? Is it through your LinkedIn or through your email? Oh, just send me a LinkedIn message, you know, no, no issues at all, because I think we are in the modern environment. Uh, in fact, using email can be seen a bit outdated today, isn't it? Right. So, <laughs> so just feel, uh, feel to drop me a message in LinkedIn and I'll do my very best to reply as soon as I can. Sure, definitely. Thank you, Mr. Sarana, for being with us today in our show. And thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Take care.